With the package from China, there was also something wicked to find, and this is one of those examples what I mean. And giving you the all famous Windows XP loading. Basically fix all of the issues when it comes to the naming. What the heck is going on in here? Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video I just wanted to check out this Windows Mini XP PC. Yeah, I've noticed this thing on AliExpress from quite a long time ago and they were asking a lot of money, but in the sale it was an interesting price, so I just picked one up just to see what I were actually getting with this. So the seller did put all of the effort to actually like putting this thing together, so I'm not messing this up. So what are we getting inside the package? So it's a lot of cables and a lot of craziness, but it seems to be it has like a mini microphone, speakers, a mouse, and even a keyboard. And then of course, we're having this very cool looking manual. And I'm just gonna be honest, I have no idea what it says. So let's get myself the translator and let's check it out. But that was actually the manual that came with it or the overview of all of the games. So first of all, it feels quite a nice to be honest when it comes to, let's say, the overall quality. Uh, yeah, so I think it's a very cool nostalgic piece of equipment. The monitor cannot be moved whatsoever. At the front, we're having no extra buttons. We just have over here two volume controls. What's kind of cool that it says over here, Windows XP. Uh, this is the escape and we have an SD card that goes in the front. A weird brand I've never seen before, an eight gigabyte. Okay, so add ourselves the SD card to the PC and we do have different kinds of folders. So the MP3 files, that's kind of weird, we have an MP3 files over here. Then we're having the music files, that folder seems to be empty. Then having the NES ROMs and here you can just see all of the naming. So if you go to add ourselves other games, then we have the option to have ourselves at least a normal, like say name list and a game list. Yeah, they are like the pictures that we have shown you in the video itself already, stickers. Over here, story, but there is nothing in here. Let's check out. But indeed, there is no information whatsoever. Story mode, user. This actually is more like a list, or that makes actually a list size file. And over here, having the videos. And I was really curious, let's add ourselves some cool things of the AV files. That's what it's actually using. And in here, we're having some extra folders. So this actually says manual. So this is actually what we're having with the metal itself. It showcases some things, explanations whatsoever about the system itself. Oh, and this is, seems to be the video converter that they implemented when you want to add yourself video files. I'm going not to go into use and open up the file, but I just wanted to showcase what's actually on the SD card. So if your SD card is getting corrupted, these are basically the folders you need to make so far that you can add yourself photos because it's highly possible that the folders have been linked to a certain function of this latest product. And at the back here, we're having all of the connections. So here we have information about the system itself. It says five volts input, 10 watts and FC. So I'm guessing the same comes with Famicom games. So this thing does need a micro USB for the power. So let's do a quick translation. So this thing says FC Academy and for the student and certificate, kind of cool to be honest. Okay, so let's open it up. But this is a quite an interesting, cool way to showcase a manual. It's a very nice, like say hard cover. And in the inside, we're just finding, I did some this like, translation, but they're just actually games. So we can check the box if you have played it. And it's kind of interesting what they've made over here. So yeah, I must give them some extra kudos for presentation but let's do a quick overview of all of the connections so first of all a mini usb for the mouse over here then we're having one of the mini usb that goes to the keyboard and the keyboard you know what's even kind of naughty in my opinion is that here and even says over here nintendo yeah so they <laughs> they added that to the keyboard but the keyboard doesn't do anything it's just for like say showcasing but we're actually having a horrible rubberized controller next up we're having the speaker number one over here and yeah that's actually where i think one speaker seems to be then we're having the microphone that also can be removed and there's one connection going from the bottom part to the top part over there 
We're using a 5 volt phone charger. It needs to be in 2000 milliamp. And yep, we're going to connect this, I'm going to say, micro USB cable over here. And this is going to give ourselves the power. The power for some nostalgia. Okay, the machine has been set up and I'll show you how you need to boot it up. So the first thing I need to do is hold this first button here, letter plus. Here we'll give you an indication. The screen itself is pretty good on this. And then we're going to push the minus button. Oh yeah, that is freaking epic. But one of the coolest features this thing just has is just booting it actually up. So holding the minus button over here will boot up the system, but first the monitor with the plus over here. So that's the first thing I need to do. Holding the minus button and giving you the all famous Windows XP loading. That's kind of cool, but it's even more cooler if you're going to use it at the same time when booted up. It will give you the shutdown system music. And that's kind of cool. But also when booting up here, we see that there is a tiny LED underneath the Windows XP logo. You know those tiny details? I love it. The display itself, I'm just going to be honest. At first I was thinking this was a beautiful IPS panel, but it's clearly not an IPS panel at all. So yeah, I've already shown you that you can mess around net the brightness over here, but that doesn't really help the view angle. It helps a little bit, but when you're actually holding it, to a certain level, oh man, it looks really hideous. So weirdly that the camera doesn't really pick it up when it comes to, let's say the overkill of white balance. So it's very difficult to show you on the camera itself. Okay, so the controls are going to be used for navigating through the menu. You can see the icon on the screen is starting to shake slightly. That's actually, you know, what where you actually are. And when it comes to the mouse itself, here we're having actually just for volume control. And when it comes to the tiny buttons over here, this is for the brightness of the display. Just going to put it on, uh, let's put it on 25%. Okay, so the first left icon is for watching videos, the middle one for playing actually games. Here we have the microphone. I'm going to be honest, I, there's only thing I can do is support, turn it on and off. Then we can listen to some music over here. And that's actually it. Then we can even watch some pictures. And these are just backgrounds that have been implemented on the machine itself or the SD card. It's kind of cool, so you can even also check out the different kind of screenshots that you can put on the back of the machine itself. So what you can do with the navigation key, here we get into the menu. The first option I already noticed is if you want to change out the background, you can actually do this. So let's say I want to change it out to this. We can just actually do it like that. It's kind of cool. And yeah, let's watch into the pictures. You can see there are actually a lot of different like pictures on this machine. Some really nostalgia ones. We can even put Windows 95 on it. But the downside actually is when you're having this, let's say, picture on it, yeah, there will always be like a couple of pictures or at least a couple of these, let's say, icons on top of it. I think it's going to be the question like which one looks the best on this tiny machine. And that is why I love this Windows XP background. Yep, that's the reason I chose for this. And also the Windows XP vibes, I'm getting this completely with this. But okay, so let's do a quick overview of some other feature what you can do with it. So you can just actually add yourself different kind of video files if you want to. It's kind of cool. The mouse doesn't do anything. And yep, you can just switch between them if you want to. I need to press start. And here we can watch all kinds of videos. So what you can actually do, if you have a video game being played on this, you can just say, hey, we're just going to be like showcasing a video game. Um, and just put it on there. So we can do some actually cool things if you want to put this thing on display. So there's one of those cool features. And yeah, watching picture, I already mentioned before, you can listen to music, but you're only having one tiny mono speaker. It's not going to be any exciting thing. Yeah, the game list is completely messed up when it comes to the names, but let's try a couple of them just to see how they will work because they are all a bit, by the way. But the machine itself, there are all kinds of different games on here. And yeah, what is maybe an option that we're going to be adding this D card and just basically fix all of the issues when it comes to, let's say, the naming or just add yourself new files. I think it's a kind of cool device. They do ask a lot of money for it. And I think this is due of all the functionality, but especially also when it comes to the beautiful IPS panel there is inside of this. 
because the panel they're using is just looking great. The overall emulation of the NES is okay. I do hear a lot of stutters and weird sound effects that not should be there. But it's quite unfortunate that this thing has all kinds of stuff, but you cannot really see what it actually means. So we just randomly grab a game and yep, everything is of course 8-bit. The overall audio quality is okay. Let's put it that way. The controller is quite horrible due of the very long buttons. If you want to go back, you press the escape button on there. And here we can choose a different kind of a game. So one thing is for sure is that there are actually some pretty cool games on here. I already messed it up and just started the game. But what I mentioned before, it's quite difficult to actually play the game. The overall quality, it's okay. The same goes for the audio quality. This is actually the loudest, how it goes with the tiny speaker. And every single time I'm going to be booting up a game, it's just going to be a kind of a surprise. And you can just hear of the audio quality, it's not great at all. Okay, so let's do a quick teardown. So underneath we're finding a sticker that he even implemented. I think it's for the warranty. Yeah, warranty for with AliExpress. That's basically when it comes to your door, that is what the warranty is. And of course you have to dispute time. Let's remove a couple of these screws and let's check out what we're finding in the inside. I think it's a very interesting piece of technology when you're looking at it. It's just actually a Famicom player or a multimedia player. There is no extra, let's say, information there that we can add more games. How cool would it be to play some Game Boy Advance? But so far, there is nothing going on. Oh, it's already getting loose. Let's see again, get the last screw out. Yep, and I voided the warranty. Wicked is feeling naughty, yeah. Go. All of the screws are finally loose now. Ooh. What the heck is going on in here? What did he put in here? Is this one of those silicon? Yep, he actually added some silicon uh, silicon back to this. And he actually did this to give this thing some extra weight? Or what? What the heck is going on? This is some really weird craziness. So, oh, we can just see now that there is just an tiny piece of beer underneath with the LCD so there's nothing much to see I think where the most magic happened is over here and I know he just uses double-sided tape to get some weight to this thing absolutely interesting but also weird at the same time there's no a lot of movement I need to be very careful with this or I'm going to be ripping some cables loose so there's a lot of let's say soldering going on with all the communication going to the display over here the pcb doesn't say a lot but it's a custom made even a lot of extra cables going from the other place over here but the weirdest part that is actually that we're having one of these in there I think one of the biggest challenges we're facing is trying to put these things in a certain position. They added some extra double-sided tape, so if you can just stick it to your desk. But if you're messing around long enough with it, it's going to be in a certain position that it will stay there. Okay, there we go. I wanted to add myself a red alert to video file and just put it on there for display. And I think I will keep trying it in the future, but it's absolutely a nightmare converting it. The prison converter, let's say software inside of the SD card, I, I'm i not a big fan of, let's say, putting those weird programs on my computer, but maybe there is another program that can convert it to AV. Unfortunate, I couldn't get it to work. This is just purely like a fun novelty to put somewhere in your collection to display some freaking like cool movies. But for now, I want to thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and it would be great to see you in the next video.